Well, it's been this way for 35 years. The city of Cape Town, South Africa, again playing host to the most amazing timed race in the world. Yes, indeed, the biggest timed race. The 35th edition of the Cape Argus Pick and Pay Cycle Tour. Almost 40,000 cyclists over the next three or four hours will take the start here in Herzog Boulevard. And at the moment, the professionals are getting on the front line. They're chasing the best time of the day. And once they make the start, they'll journey 110 kilometers around some of the most beautiful, stunning scenery in the world. Good morning, everybody. I'm Phil Liggett, and joining me alongside is a former winner of this event in Kim Carter, who has been a rider who has uh, with great distinction in the past. So, Kim, alongside me here. Uh, good morning, Kim. You're looking bright and cheerful. Thank you, Phil. Lovely to be here. Yeah, and you've won this race, and you've ridden three times, right? I have indeed. Um, two seconds. Two seconds ah, and, and one first. <laughs> and alongside a man uh, who's ridden this event 15 times, Paul, you are a sub three hour man, Paul Velster. Well, it's the most wonderful race in the world. As you said, around the most beautiful peninsula yeah. in the world, and 40,000 people are going to have the best fun they could ever have. And down at the start line, uh, we'll find Erica Green, a two-time winner of this event. And uh, also down there well, we is the Owen Hanny. Again. And Hanny, by the way, is also riding at 7.34 today as he takes off around the course. Well, it's just great to be here. We've been involved with this for 22 years now. And every, every year it's even more exciting. The crowds, the crowds down here are stronger than I've seen it for 22 years. And the weather today looks great. I hope it's okay around the corner when they get into the wind. But it's a great day for Cape Town. It's a great day for South Africa. Right. We're delighted with the, the organizers, David right. Belairs, and, and, and all the people who work today. It's amazing what they do today. And it's helped cycling because cycling is growing as a sport in South Africa. And what I'm excited about is to see these young guys that we've been helping with bicycles developing into uh, very keen cyclists and giving them a place in society. Well, Rainer Jans for Rensburg rides with MT and Quebec. He just finished second place uh, last week to Robert Hunter in the SN National Championship Road Race. He also won the individual time trial, so he's got the form of his life and he expects a good performance from him today. Also, a bit of pressure on your shoulders today then, Rainer. Yeah, important race for me was last week, but growing up as a kid, you always see the Argus and it's one of the races you always want to win. So yeah, I'm a bit inspired to win today. Well, I'm joined at the top here by Santa Bardo from uh, the Argus, uh, Cape Argus newspaper. And their involvement in the sport has been a very, very long time. And it's great to have you guys on board once again this year. 35th edition, it's been a long history with this race, hasn't it? It's been a privilege to be part of this race. You know, when, when it started out, I'm sure the people involved had no idea how this thing would grow from strength to strength to the 50th, 35th edition, sorry. Um, and I mean, it's one of the best days in Cape Town. I love it. It's a family, it's a family week, you know, the Life Cycle Expo, the Junior Cycle Tours, all my kids take part. Oh, okay, my two kids take and um, it's a fantastic weekend. Are you guys ready? Well, good morning. I'm standing on the start line with the girls' race. Um, here I have Ashley Mulman Passio, the current reigning SA road champ. Ashley, what's in it today? Um, yeah, the Argus is always a great race. It's a beautiful route and all the people coming together to ride. So, um, yeah, um, Team Momentum Toyota um, will go out there to do their best today. And, yeah, let's see what happens. All right, awesome. Thanks a lot. And over to this side is Cherise Taylor. Cherise, you've won this race twice. Is it going to be a third time today? No, uh, we'll see. I mean, um, this is a pretty difficult race to say before the time with the men. It's more just right place at the right time. I think um, everybody has a really good chance of winning and there's such um, like a huge talent of girls riding and everybody's extremely strong at the moment. So we'll see what happens at the end of the stage. You must be feeling nervous just like everybody else here today. Yes, this is it. I think it's just a bit anxious, but once we start, everything will be over. Focus on the job. <laughs> you must be very brave, man, because, I mean, everybody knows you to be a flamboyant man that uh, really has words that uh, comes out very inspirationally. Yeah. But now exchanging all that just for cycling kits and getting out there for a good cause. Yes, I think uh, once in a lifetime we've got to do this. I think uh, my own encouragement is the fact that uh, if we say we've got to live a healthy lifestyle and keep up fit, we've We've got to do something about it. Well, we thank you for that, and let's hope that something has done, been done about it. We'll see you on the bicycle, but later on at uh, 7:34, you ready to go? Whoa, 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 whoa! Fantastic! <laughs> let's go! Let's do this! 
and I'm joined by the Premier of the Western Cape, Helen Ziller. Nothing can really prepare you for the nerves you feel on the start line, does it? Nothing at all. I've been through much pressure in many situations, but never like this. Never like this. Look at this glorious day in Cape Town, the fabulous people, the biggest time cycle race in the world to be part of it. It's a feeling like no other. We've heard on Twitter that you've been training quite furiously, is that true? Well, for about two and a half months I've been training when I can. I can never take more than an hour of work at a time, but it's just been such a motivation. And I have Suzanne ackerman Berman here. Suzanne, Transformation Director for Pick and Pay. I think you guys have done an awesome job. Can you? This is obviously proof of the pudding. It's been amazing. And these guys here, we have Sean and Kaya here from Velo Kaya. Who, with 80 of their other colleagues, are going to be riding in their incredible gear. But can I just say thank you to Cape Town? It's been amazing this morning. With pleasure. Sean, what does this mean for you today? Well, it's, it means a lot to me because um, Pick and Pay has helped us so much with regards to the supporting and aiding of bikes and also uniform for a kid. And I just to say thank you to them because they've become a foundation of our dreams to become future cyclists of South Africa. And Kaya, how long have you been cycling for? I've been cycling for five years, but this is my th th third time that I'm doing the cycle tour. Uh, I joined the club in 2010, but I'm representing my sponsor and I'm proud of it. Kalicha, like most townships, faces a lot of difficulties with regards to alcohol, um, drug abuse, but Velokaya it offers them a lot in terms of riding, but gives them discipline, dedication and teamwork with regards to when they go outside, they know what's strong and what's right. Velokaya offers riders the opportunity to ride both on the BMX side of things and on the roadside. Pick and Bear has been one of the longest standing sponsors with um, the Life Cycling Academy. We don't just focus on their riding, it's also how they're living and their academics and their riding. So we look at the rider holistically and the reason why they, why they stay is that they feel at home when they're here. My dream for cycling is to be part of the Tour de France so that my mother and my family, I mean everyone, could watch me on the television. It has to do with passion. There's a lot of struggle that we go through, but we make sure at the end of the day that, you know what, we're going to wake up and make sure that we try our best to make sure that this thing works. Before cycling, uh, I never used to do any sports, so I was amongst bad, bad company and that kind of stuff. So when I joined cycling, all of that stopped, and then I made new friends over here. And then I learned a lot. I learned to respect others, and also to be disciplined wherever I am. Academy gives us a chance to go forward in life, and it gives us the opportunity that we as black people never had before in this kind of sport. with some of the 81 cyclists from Velakaya who are very excited to put their daily training and hard work to good use. But in addition to that, I'm sure they're very excited about the bicycles that will be donated to the Academy as part of Pick and Pay's new Like Bike initiative. Am I right guys? Yeah! Like Bike is a fantastic concept that Pick and Pay and the marketing team and social marketing team from Pick and Pay came along with. and. They decided to do something completely different this year with Cape Barker's Pick and Pay Cycle Tour. And they're going to build a bike that's fueled completely with likes. And for every thousand likes, Pick and Pay would donate a bike to the Lakaya Life Cycling Academy. of the Cape Argus Pick and Pay Cycle Tour. I'm going off in three minutes time. I'm super nervous. I'm mounted with GoPros, the iPad, the light bike is ready. We're already sitting on 13 bikes. So the more likes, the more bikes we can donate. And I'm hoping by the end of the day to double the amount. So wish me luck, off, off I go. My biggest challenge is gonna be the first 20 kilometers while I'm still cold. Uh, Edinburgh Drive M3, uh, not looking forward to that, and uh, the last hill in Clifton, I know it's not even a hill, 
but by then I'm going to be so tired. And what's going to motivate me through the tough times are the team from Vilakaya. I met them all this morning. They're incredible. And I just know that I'm making a difference for the Pick and Pay Vilakaya Life Cycling Academy. We've just finished Chapman's Peak. It was a bit tough out there, really, really hot. I've just made it to Half Bay on the Pick and Pay Like Bike. The support on the route has been absolutely amazing. People that I've never met or seen before just pushing me along. It's just been incredible. And you know what the great thing is? It's not only about me giving back. There's so many other cyclists on the road that are giving back to various charity organizations. And it's so great to see cyclists making a difference in the lives of the community and the lives of others. But let me go. make their way down Boys Drive, the picturesque village of Colt Bay is certainly a sight for sore eyes and I'm sure lots of sore thighs as well. But beyond the postcard images of this popular tourist destination lies a thriving fishing industry that supports thousands of families and businesses in the area. Sustainability is a key issue, which is why Pick and Pay, who is one of the largest buyers of seafood in South Africa, are partnering with Sassy to ensure smarter, sustainable practices that will keep this village alive for many cycle tours to come. The reality is that 2.2 billion people worldwide rely on the oceans and the marine resources within the oceans for their livelihoods, either in a direct way or in an indirect way. It's something that we need to take quite seriously. SASI is an awareness campaign. It's giving consumers information about the sustainability of seafood. Um, taking all the complicated information about life history strategies and different management measures and different ways of catching fish and putting it into an easy to understand list. So the coolest tool I think that we have is called the FishMS and it's really just an SMS line that you can text the name of the fish to and you'll get a reply immediately telling you whether you can tuck in or whether you need to avoid altogether. Oh, we're very excited about the fact that Pick and Pay has come on board as one of our main retailer partners and since they became the main sponsor of the SASE program, they further committed to sourcing only sustainable seafood by the end of 2015, which, is, they, which makes them the first retailer in Africa to make such a big commitment to sustainability. They put SASE messaging in all their stores, they've got information about SASE, if you go to their fish counters, their fish daily people are trained up to be able to give information to their clientele about what species are available, how it was caught and where it was caught. The Pick and Pay Cape Argus is such an important platform for SASE because it really just helps us spread our message far broader than what we would be able to on our own. As consumers are realizing that they really do have the power to drive what's, what, what's happening on the oceans, they're grabbing onto that and it's a phenomenal thing to see for us. It makes sense to invest in sustainability. John, tell us about Pick and Pay's environmental management plan. Okay, the plan is, is twofold. It's obviously to ensure that the route is as clean as possible, actually even cleaner than when we found it, and also that the most of the material that is retrieved is sent back to be recycled. Tell us about the team involved today. Well, we've got about 75 cleaners cleaning the whole route. They clean outside the refreshment points, and then we've got seven trucks picking up the waste on the route. The waste from here goes to Cryfontaine, to the municipal recovery facility where we've got a large group of people of about 50 going through all the bags and then uh, separating into the various material. How much of the waste collected today can be recycled? Oh, 95% of the waste can be generated. It's clean stuff. Last year, for instance, we retrieved 3.6 tons of plastic bottles. This year we've gone one step further. The boxes uh, that uh, is part of the event as uh, where people throw their, uh, their litter in, we're retrieving it and we'll be using those again.
with temperatures soaring into the 30s, it's easy to see why this is one of the most popular pit stops along the cycle tour route. Pick and Pay, in partnership with the City of Cape Town and movements like Flow, are turning an essential thing like a water tanker into a really simple, smart and yet effective way of promoting water conservation during the cycle tour. The goal really is collective behavior change, that we all change our habits, change our lifestyles and make a commitment to be for love of water. The inspiring piece of this race is that it continues to bring people together from various backgrounds, it brings together business, with government, with the consumer, with individual. And so it's a very powerful platform to address an issue like water, which is what flow drives. I've already finished two litres, so I'm, I'm, I'm on another two litres, so it's very important, you need to rehydrate. The water truck is definitely a benefit, especially now that everybody is getting so tired. Our research has shown that the number one solution to the global freshwater crisis is awareness and education. The need for flow is very much about linking different levels of government, different organizations, different businesses to people. And so the event provides an opportunity to, to unify those people and then link them to the message. One in eight women will die in this country from breast cancer and with an average of 33 million women in this country, that's a huge number of women that will die unnecessarily just due to lack of education. Pink Drive is a breast cancer education and awareness campaign. Basically we have two mobile vehicles, one based in Johannesburg, one based in Cape Town and they offer free services to women in the community who do not have access to this kind of breast checking service, women that would never be able to afford it. We do breast checks um, and mammograms up to 180 women a day. Um, with partnerships such as the one that we have with Pick and Pay, we would not be able to do what we do. This partnership has enabled us to be at events such as this Pick and Pay Argus Cycle Tour. They've given us the platform to have a stand and to promote what we do and give this kind of experience to people that wouldn't necessarily have known who we are and what we do. And then part of the actual event on the day, we're going to be in um, at the bottom of Sekabossi, which also belongs to Pick and Pay. Through massive support, we're going to literally pimp the whole of Hout Bay Pink from the bottom of Princess Circle all the way up. So everybody will be wearing pink. We're providing pink t-shirts, pink caps, pink sunblock, all of those kinds of things to make sure that those riders that have supported us will get the support from us. Last year we had about 180 riders, this year we're going to have about 230 riders which is fantastic which means the numbers are growing, the support is growing and obviously the more